Hey guys, how's it going? Um, it's been a while, but I've been working on this van engine, and it's got it had three seized injectors. I managed to get the one of them out, and these two obviously are still stuck in. And there's I tried I, I took it took the head down to a diesel specialist uh, with a hydraulic puller, and he stuck um, seven ton of pull on this um, bottom injector here. And he left it overnight, and then he turned it up a bit more. I think he said it had around 10 ton on it, and then it basically popped and it blew the threads in here where they what they thread the um part in up in there. So then I took it home and I welded a attachment onto it, and then they, they done, basically done the same thing again. Had the injector under pressure with a hydraulic puller, it's around 10 ton. Over the weekend, didn't move, tried to give it a bit more, and then in the end I just said oh, I'll just take it up and see what breaks, because usually the injectors break once you go over 10 ton he reckoned. So he done that, and he said he had it up to around 14 ton, and then, the, then it blew the weld off. So these injectors are proper, proper seized. But the weird thing is I can actually get a spanner on, a 22mm spanner on the flats there, and I can get these sort of like one eighth of a turn left and right, so they can actually spin in the bore. But this is where it seizes in here. So it's quite, it's pretty surprising. I and also with this bottom one, I used the heat, got oxyacetylene set, and I heated the injector itself up. I got the injector body red hot, which you wouldn't normally do, but I just thought you know we'll see we'll see what I can do. <laughs> got it red hot and then I managed to be able to crack this one as well which was this one wouldn't even turn originally so this one can spin left to right re with a reasonable amount of force so yeah but then the amount of time I spent to get these work on this and to pull these injectors etc you've got it you've kind of got to decide when you're doing this stuff if it's worth your time because you can time can disappear like Spent a day on that or two days on that. Uh, got this one out. When you can buy a second-hand cylinder head for 130 quid delivered, and you can get these injectors here for um, good second-hand ones for 30 quid. So, and in, in the end, I thought I'm not. I can't be bothered trying to drill these out, which is basically the next step. If you can't pull them hydraulically, you've got to drill them, which is a big headache. So I just thought, you know, stuff it, go and get a, a second-hand cylinder head in good condition, which is what I did. So yeah, it's been a bit of a nightmare, but I probably, in hindsight, I would have just done that straight away, but it's one of them, you never know until you actually get into it. And so, what else? Because oh, originally this engine had a, um, spun the cam belt. So that's the old... That's the old cam pulley, and it's got a stripped off keyway. So yeah, where the cam pulley sits on the camshaft, if timing goes out and it, try, it goes out of phase and it tries to crank over, it basically just strips the keyway there. And that's the, that's how it should look with the little keyway on there, Lo locates on the camshaft, obviously. So yeah, that's happened, keyway stripped. It had one bent valve, which was no biggie. I mean, these the valves on the diesels are pretty like sturdy as, but yeah, one slightly bent valve, inlet valve. So yeah, bit a bit of a headache for what it is. But now I've got the second hand cylinder head. I've just um, give it a light 800 grit sand. Check the deck's completely flat. Um, put a straight edge on it, not even the, not even the minimum feeler blade tolerance could get underneath so it's perfect gave the valves a quick lap in you can see there where the grey is on all the the margins all look good spot on, so basically I'm just going to assemble put the valves in assemble it and the only other thing with these motors, they're, they're quite strange Oh, this, yeah, by the way, this is the 1.9 DCI uh, Vivaro Renault Traffic 
Yeah, and they've got uh, solid lifters. So that's it there. And like, com compare that, this is, a, this is a hydraulic lifter. So they've got hydraulic lifters, there's no, um, you don't have to set clearances up. The hydraulic pressure just takes it up to zero clearance. And with this, with these type of solid lifters, there's no, there's no shims, so it's quite strange. I'm used to like motorbike stuff, kind of, you just change shims out to adjust your clearances. With this one, you've actually got to change the whole follower itself. So yeah, what I'm thinking of doing with this, I might actually just cut this off and weld a nut on here and just spin it with a um, an impact gun and just see if that actually can free it up enough to remove it without trying to drill it. Or what? I just want to. Just frustrating that thing, such a small little thing seizing, such a big headache. So yeah, no, it's been a while since I had a video out, but I've been I've been away a bit, so haven't had much internet in that. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna continue with this this assembly, set it up, put the camshaft in, check the clearances, and then maybe do some adjustments with the with the lifters. Okay.